Hello everyone, it's Will. Today we have a very exciting tutorial for you. We're gonna talk about editable grids. We're gonna start very simple, just with an interface from scratch, and we'll try to create an interface to be able to edit some data into it. We're not gonna tie it with a process model just yet, but we're gonna have a very well-functioning editable grid to be able to input some employees' data. Let's look at the finished product here. So we have a very simple editable grid where we can input the first name, the last name, the email, and the phone number of our employees. And of course I can edit those details here. Uh, so I can change that, change those values here. And then I can also remove uh, rows in there. I can add rows here as well. So other employee here. And I can also remove some rows. So I can remove this one and that will remove in the editable grid. So let's start with a very simple blank interface. Now I'm gonna use my Appian Community Edition here. So if you don't have it already, just go to community.appian.com and then you can actually have your Community Edition to be able to practice as I'm showing you this. We'll be following this plan on the right here and this plan is available in the description below. So you can just find the link and it'll be there. So let's first start with the scaffold here. It's kind of the, the basic structure that we need to have with this empty interface. So here what we'll do is that we'll declare a local variable. This local variable here, here doesn't do anything for now because it will store the data in our, you know, the, our employees data essentially. So then we're gonna create a grid layout and this will be the basic uh, structure of our interface. Now it is throwing an error message because we're missing a couple of mandatory uh, keywords that are necessary for the grid layout. But we're gonna get into it, don't worry about it. Let's put a label to our grid layout here. So pretty simple, just employees, doesn't need to be super fancy. You could also use a section layout to be able to wrap this grid layout to have a, you know, maybe a more stylish um, label. And now we're gonna get into the header cells. So the header cells are gonna be the names of your columns in your editable grid in a way, right? So what I'm gonna do is just create those four header cells, first name, last name, email, and phone number. And what you can also put in there is also tooltips if you want to have a little tooltip to indicate for your user experience. So right now we don't have an error, but we don't have anything in our uh, grid here because you know it doesn't. the grid doesn't know that it's supposed to cycle through the employee's data. So what we'll be doing is actually creating rows for each item in the data. So here we have a local bank data, we're gonna to want to create as many rows as we have items in the data. So we'll, that, we'll do that by declaring rows here with for each and the items of that for each will be local bank data. And what we need here is to actually create one grid row layout, which is the component that we'll need to create. So here we're doing grid row layouts and essentially we're creating one grid row layout per item in my local bank data. Now here we're still seeing nothing, but don't worry about it, we're gonna to get to it. What we'll do here in the contents is gonna be the list of components, so text fields, decimal fields, you know, any kind of fields that you can put in an editable grid for each column, essentially, right? So we're creating as many rows, but then in the rows, we're creating one component per, one input field, essentially, per column. So we're going to actually going to create that. So here I'm going to create a text field just for the first name, and then I'm going to do a text field for the last name, and then a text field for the email, and then a text field for the phone number. So very simple here. We're not putting any required uh, here because we're not really using the data in, you know, in, through a process or writing to the database. So we just want to have those fields appear like here, as, as, uh, just, just like here. So we have first name, last name, email, and phone number. Very, very simple. So that's kind of our, our scaffold here for our editable grid. So that's that gets uh, you know that that is the the piece around the structure of the grid done. Now we're going to move into adding new rows because right now I have no way of adding new rows, and that's going to be pretty simple. In the editable grid, there is a keyword which is called add row link, which we're going to be adding um, in our editable grid. So if I just collapse the couple of things that we've already done here. So you see here we have a header cells, which is done. We've got rows, which is done. And now we're creating add row link. So we're doing dynamic link. And here we have a label to be new employee. Now, the problem here is that if I click on this, nothing happens, which is normal. You know, we're not, we didn't put any logic in the dynamic link. So let's put the logic in. What we're gonna have here is we're gonna be saying, when you click on the dynamic link, save into the local bank data. And what you save in the local bank data is 
the actual list of local bank data plus a map. So this is what it's saying here, append local bank data map. So we're, we're adding a map after a local bank data and a map is a data structure which is pretty flexible. Um, it's got a key value structure and we can basically add uh, you know, different fields and keys to that map. So here, if we start to click on it, this is already starting to work. We can have first name, so John Doe, and that works. I'm not gonna put the, the phone number, but that works. And I can add multiple employees. Now the problem here is that I can't really remove. So if I, you know, I wanna remove a row, I don't have a way to remove that row. So let's actually take a look at this. I'm gonna go into the to delete a row. What we need to do is to actually add another header cell because essentially what we can do is have a little icon here at the end with a little kind of cross to say, just remove that, uh, that row. So we need to actually add a new header cell just to add another column. So we're gonna do that. And that is now yelling at me because uh, there is a, you know, it, it's missing a component. It needs to have as many components in the, in the rows as there is header cells, but because we've just added a column, it's missing a component here. So now what I need to as well do is just to declare column configurations, just to be able to have the column to be small at the very end. And so what we're gonna do here is add a list of column configs. And what I need to have is as many column configs as I have um, lay, layout header cells. So I'm trying to look for all of the different columns that I have, and now I'm adding layout column configs. And I just need to define the width at the end. The other ones, the other width of the columns will be just automatic. So here I'm just having width to be icon, so that way it will be small. And then what I need to do is just declare another field to the list of components content. So another component in the list of contents here, which is gonna be a rich text display field just to display a rich text icon, which will be that little icon we can click on. So here we don't have an error anymore, but right now we don't see any uh, rich text icons. So we're gonna go ahead and actually define what it should look like with a little cross. And then I just need to define the logic here and the logic will be using also a dynamic link. So we use dynamic link to be able to add the data. Here we're gonna do use dynamic link to overwrite the data, local bank data, but with itself, but removed the row that we clicked on. So here we're saying remove local bank data at the index of the row and then save it over, overwrites the local bank data. So if we click on here, it's actually gonna work. So that's it, very simple editable grid. In the next video, we're gonna look at how you can map this into a record type that you might already have, let's say an employee's record type. Uh, but I encourage you to actually try to practice this um, and you can use, of course, the list of steps uh, in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.